Hi guys and welcome back to the stool testing series. So this is the last one for a little while in the series and we're going to go over the Sobogen Gut Biome. Not to be confused with the Gut Biome Plus, which is a totally different technology, totally different test, and we already reviewed that in a different video. This is Somogen 16S test, which also is paired with some genetic stuff. Now, this is not my own test. Uh, full disclosure, this is my husband's. So I conned him into doing one for me because I was getting sick of doing stool tests. But they start you off with some genetic information. Think, you know, reminiscent of 23andMe. And I won't go into all of the detail here. This is more of a conversation for that kind of world. Um, but, you know, sometimes there's information that could be had from here. So low, low, likely to have a low level of vitamin B12. All right, interesting. Or magnesium, but he tends to be fine on iron. Um, so you can see that they give you some different characteristics. This is the PDF printout, by the way, of the results. If you're curious, this is not like the login, the portal that they give you. That looks more like that. Um, they give you physical traits. I'm actually going to skip down to the gut portion of this because that's really what we're looking at. So for the stool section of this, they have uh, they give you scores very similar to the other report that they do. So they give you 80% for diversity. Uh, they plot you on a graph. My husband has a better gut than I do. <laughs> I'm just going to sulk for a minute here. Uh, they give you relative abundances of the three types. So again, they plot you as a, a fiber lover, an omnivore, or a meat eater more so. Um, so he is more of a bacteroidetes type, or bacteroides rather, type. Um, he still falls in the omnivorous section. Let's see though, where are we getting to that I actually want to get to? All right. Um, so this is doing, again, it's giving you a diversity gut score. Uh, I think this is going to be less useful than the whole genome sequencing as far as their ability to assess diversity, but it's still something. So I think that that, um, that is still useful information to have. Uh, the beneficial bacteria, you could see that they're giving you uh, different levels, bacterial abundances. They give you B. longum, which he didn't have any detected. Fecalobacterium prezidicii, he's kind of on the higher end of the normal at 20%, which is magnificent. Roseburia, you can see he's kind of higher end of normal. Acromancia, they're saying 0.1% is higher end of normal, which is just pitiful. Um, I would like to see that more in the 3 to 5% range. So I think that his is actually low. It needs quite a lot of work. Uh, and then Ruminococcus brahmi is not detected. That is at a zero. Uh, they go into, you know, they have a really nice handout for you here. Uh, here we go again with more bacteria. They give you Fecalobacterium prezidicii again. Um, I'm actually not familiar with this bacteria, so I don't really have a commentary on that. Uh, B adolescences, though, 5.5% for that bifido species is pretty amazing. Uh, this is another Clostridium species. I don't know much about it, though, so that I can't really comment on. But Clostridia are usually good species to have around. Uh, this Blautia species right in the middle, this one that I'm not familiar with is high end of normal. Eubacterium is a butyrate producer, so that's good to have around. That's high end of normal. Uh, you can see that they give you these nice little plots. Eubacterium also is good. Uh, they give you the probiotics profile. And again, this is a nice visual. Uh, this zero, 0 out of 11 detected for the probiotics here. So you can see, I mean, just just zero, 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 all the way down. And you can see though, what, what is interesting on this printout report, and this is not apparent when you go into the, the portal section of the website, is they show you practically 0% of the population has any of this lactobacilli species detected. Similarly, uh, you know, uh, to contrast, about a quarter of the population has this one detected. So that's kind of interesting that they gave you that. Uh, Lactococcus, lactus, undetected for him, whereas most of the population would have at least a little bit. Uh, Streptococcus thermophilus usually is detected, but not for him. And then Bifidobacterium longum. Uh, I was surprised to see that 70% of people have some detected B. longum, but he did not. So they give you a little bit of your standing as opposed to like the normal run of the mill um, person. So all of those were undetected, similar to me. We're twinsies, I guess. Um, but moving on, you know, they talk about the probiotics a bit. They go more into the gut type again. Let's see. I'm not going to bore you with the reading here. Um, all right. Different bacteria. So you could see 
Uh, Bifido overall, he had 5.5%. It's basically all that one species, and it's not necessarily the the key species like longum that we're looking for, but he did actually have some bifido, so I'm forever envious of him for that. He had a nice measure for Fecalobacterium pretzinitzii at 20%, Roseburia about 1%, and Lactobacillus at 0%. So if anything, my dear husband needs to eat yogurt, which is really, really funny because he hates yogurt. Um, these are the ones that are the potential to reduce your health. Um, you know, you could see that this one at 0.1%, uh, copper caucus, that's actually a butyrate producer, so I would disagree with them on that, but, you know, whatever. It, it is what it is. Um, so they give you a couple of potential bad guys, and then they give you some as it pertains more to weight purposes. You can see, uh, again, they, they're bringing in some of that same information. So bifido, uh, acromancia, they're still flagging him as high end of normal, but I think that is not the case. I think that still needs some work. Um, but they give you some particular species that are associated more with uh, weight efforts. So that's something helpful. Uh, let's see, this one is for bloating. Uh, you can see zero for all of these. Uh, the guy definitely needs probiotics, but then he also doesn't have any of the overgrown species that could contribute to bloating. Now I would say there's a lot of things that can contrib contribute to bloating beyond the couple that they gave you there. So for what it's worth, I think that's an incomplete assessment. Uh, but then coming down over here, we have constipation, uh, bifido, fecalobacterium, roseburia. All three of those are good. Lactobacillus is still low. You can see that there's a lot of redundant information that's coming up. They're testing the same handful of species here. Um, and you can see, again, we're kind of repeating ourselves. So you'll get kind of the running theme. And this is basically what the test looks like. So they give you a handful of bacteria, but you can see, as I mentioned in other videos, they don't give us any sort of a breakdown of the phylum level. They're not really, uh, they're not really allowing us to snoop around and look for particular species like we could on a Thrive report, for example. If I wanted to, I could type in something in Thrive and I could pull it up and see what it looks like. Um, so there's, there's really quite a lot more versatility, I think, with Thrive. What I did think to do, and I'm not going to bore you too much with more of this. Let me see if I can pull this up. Uh, what I did think to do from this was I was like, you know, this is kind of limited, uh, like how much I could really use this information. So I contacted the company uh, who's been very responsive so far to uh, any contact that I've had with them. But I did reach out to the company and I asked for uh, basically an Excel spreadsheet of all of this, of like what bacteria was tested and can you give me some more information on it. So I'm going to pull that up right now. It's just taking a second to load on my other screen and then I'll drag it over. Okay, so you can email the company. You can email the company and get something like this in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and I'll drag this over so you can see. Okay, so they give you something that looks like this, where now you have uh, some bacteria. So you can see, like, okay, bacteria, Firmicutes, Clostridia, like we're getting more specific, right? So we're starting with the kingdom, then the phylum, and we're getting more and more specific until we get down to the individual species. So there is this information. If you guys remember the part two of the Thrive interpretation video, the way that Thrive does theirs and the way that you buy them used to do theirs is that they had a separate column for each. So you could actually take this and organize it and you could say, all right, we're going to put it in order of phylum from greatest to least and, or alphabetical order. And you could really play with the information a lot more. The way that they have the information organized now, it would take forever and a day to try to comb through and find everybody because now like all right you can kind of i don't know you can kind of like try to look for a few things like all right here's one proteobacteria but it's um it's going to be quite a bit more challenging to work with this information in my opinion and what i haven't figured out yet i did reach out to the company and try to get this information from them and i haven't heard back yet i have no idea what hashtag z o t u is and I have no idea what these numbers are. 
I'm thinking that this might be the raw percentage. And if we like move the decimal point over two times, then we might get what we're looking for, similar to doing a Thrive report with their CSV file. But I'm honestly not sure. So I did contact the company and I did ask them, hey, what is ZOTU and what is column C? And like, what am I looking at and how do I use this file? And they haven't gotten back to me yet. So I don't know if they have a lot of people asking that. Um, but you can ask for this taxonomy XLXS and try to make sense out of it. I just have yet to do that. Uh, but you can see, so, you know, they, they try to give you a lot of actionable information and a lot of like supplementary reading material about what your gut looks like. Uh, my problem with this test is that for somebody like me who's really looking for specific information and I'm really trying to hone in on um, particular bacteria or particular bacteria types, it's not super useful for me. So I'm not going to be recommending this test moving forward to my patients. However, if you are a person and you don't have a me in your life, like if you don't have a doctor or a professional who can help you decipher stool test results and you just want like a test that gives you uh, some of the interpretation of what they feel is important as like part of their service, you might consider looking into this. Um, I don't know, you know, how much actionable information there would be for a normal lay person. But for me as a professional, this is not anything super useful for me. I find the Thrive 16S test to be much, much more useful. So I will continue to recommend that one instead. And that way I'm getting a lot more utility, a lot more species that are looked at and quantified. And also um, I can do the eagle eye overview with the the phylum, and I can get more and more specific as we get down into the species. And as a note, uh, this this technology, 16S testing, is pretty accurate at the bird eye view level, at the, um, the phylum level, it's pretty accurate. And really all the way down to, we think the genus level, it's pretty accurate. But then once you, had, once you get to the actual species, that's when 16S starts to fall apart and not do so good. So I do think that something like Thrive is at least useful down to the genus level. And then the individual species and certainly the individual strains, that would be something more where you would want to look at something like the Somogen Gut Biome Plus test to see, as I discussed in that video, something like the Fecalobacterium strain ABC, um, things like that would be more apparent on that type of a test. And like when they say that they're looking for Lactobacillus acidophilus, you could be very sure that they are measuring that versus the 16S technology, maybe a little bit less so. So I would recommend that that upgraded test as opposed to this test. Um, but I think there's still some, some pros for this test. It's very cheap. That's another pro. It was like a hundred bucks or something like that. So that is definitely a plus for this. But overall, I'm not going to use this in my clinical practice. And if you have IBS, SIBO, IBD, GERD, if you have some reason that you want to do stool testing, this is probably not the test for you. You would be more suited to doing one that actually has more, um, more specific information in it. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.